The French government's policies and actions in Africa have been contentious and often detrimental to the stability and sovereignty of African nations. Over the years, we've observed an alarming number of cups in African countries where France has had a significant presence and influence. It is essential to ask, to what extent has France's involvement contributed to the instability and political upheavals in these nations? Today, we are going to use examples to explain how France is failing African countries and what China is doing to help. Hello and welcome back to Innovative Czech YouTube channel, where we delve into the innovative and transformative projects changing our world. If you're new to the channel and enjoy learning about innovation stories around the world, you've come to the right place. Please subscribe, like and comment to help boost our videos on YouTube. Now let's begin. The manner in which France continues to engage with African countries today warrants serious criticism. Despite the era of colonization being long over, the echoes of neo-colonialism are hard to ignore in France's relations with Africa. France's handling of African nations seems to be characterized by an overbearing presence and a tendency to intervene excessively in their internal affairs, often to the detriment of the local populations and the democratic processes within these countries. For instance, France's monetary policy in Africa, particularly the CFA franc, has long been a subject of controversy and criticism. The CFA franc which is pegged to the euro and guaranteed by the French Treasury, imposes strict monetary constraints on the 14 African countries that use it. While it offers some advantages like stability, it also limits these countries' monetary sovereignty and economic flexibility, perpetuating a form of economic dependency on France. We must also address the French military presence in Africa, while it is often justified under the guise of counterterrorism efforts and maintaining stability, there have been numerous instances where this military presence has arguably exacerbated tensions and conflicts rather than resolving them. Starting with Mali, we must delve into France's military intervention, known as Operation Serval in 2013, followed by Operation Barkhane. While these missions were initiated with the aim of combating Islamist militants and restoring stability, their effectiveness and long-term impact on Mali's security and sovereignty are highly debatable. Critics argue that despite the significant military presence, regions in Mali continue to be engulfed in instability and violence. The military intervention hasn't led to a sustainable peace, but rather seems to have exacerbated tensions with various jihadist groups still actively operating in the region. This perpetual state of insecurity hinders development efforts, exacerbates humanitarian crises, and leaves the population in a constant state of uncertainty and fear. Furthermore, there's a perception among some Malians that the French military presence primarily serves France's strategic interest in the region rather than genuinely supporting Mali's path to peace and stability. This skepticism is further fueled by France's historical role as a colonial power and the ongoing economic and political influence it wields in the country. China has always brought peace in form of trade to Mali, making China the largest trading partner to the country of Mali. Niger Republic presents another case study of France's problematic engagement in Africa. Niger is a significant supplier of uranium to France, a crucial resource for France's extensive network of nuclear power plants. The mining operations, predominantly controlled by the French company Orano, formerly Areva, have been accused of causing environmental damage, exploiting local labor, and not adequately contributing to the local economy. While Niger is one of the world's leading uranium producers, it remains one of the poorest countries globally. The revenue generated from uranium mining has not translated into substantial improvements in living standards for the majority of the population. Critics argue that the terms of trade and resource extraction heavily favor French companies, perpetuating a cycle of exploitation and underdevelopment in Niger. Now, Niger is allowing China into the country after France exit to foster peace and stability in a more matured approach. Gabon's relationship with France exemplifies the political influence and economic dominance that characterize France's dealings with many of its former colonies. Gabon has been a stable and reliable ally for France in Central Africa, but this alliance has often been critiqued for supporting authoritarian regimes and not promoting democratic governance and human rights effectively. For many years, Gabon was ruled by Omar Bongo, who maintained close ties with various French governments. Critics argue that this close relationship resulted in France turning a blind eye to governance issues, corruption, 
and human rights abuses in Gabon. This support for autocratic leaders undermines the development of democratic institutions and processes in the country and contributes to political instability and social tension. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to subscribe, share the video and comment. France has historically played a role in the political dynamics of various African countries through its military presence and economic policies. However, these engagements often seem to toe the line between support and interference, and it is paramount to inspect whether such involvement truly serves the best interests of the African nations or primarily advances French objectives. Furthermore, France's economic involvement in Africa often manifests in the form of massive corporations exploiting natural resources, sometimes without adequately compensating the local economies or investing in sustainable development for the communities affected. This economic dynamic could be perceived as a modern incarnation of older, exploitative relationships, not fostering genuine partnerships, but rather perpetuating dependency and underdevelopment in many regions. In addressing the issue with China, the assertion made by officials in Paris, pointing towards a binary choice for Europe between asserting power or submitting to China, oversimplifies the complex tapestry of international relations and global trade dynamics. This perspective can lead to an antagonistic approach, ignoring opportunities for collaboration and mutual growth, while risking the escalation of trade tensions into something more damaging for all parties involved. Such a posture doesn't consider the long-term implications for global economic stability and prosperity. Engaging with China requires a nuanced and strategic approach, considering both the challenges and opportunities presented by the relationship. Diplomacy that is solely based on power assertion is not only outdated but dangerous in a multipolar world where cooperation is not just ideal but necessary for tackling global challenges, from economic recovery post-pandemic to climate change. When examining France's relationship with Africa, one cannot ignore the legacy of colonialism and the shadows it casts on contemporary interactions. The policies and strategies deployed by France in Africa often appear not entirely divested from a paternalistic and exploitative framework, which not only hampers the prospects of sovereign development in the African states, but also engenders resentment and instability in the region. Let's take a deeper dive into France's military operations in Africa. While these missions are officially designated to assist local governments in maintaining peace and security, concerns about their true nature and impact cannot be dismissed lightly. Often, the presence of French military forces seems to correlate with heightened tensions and conflicts in the region. There's a palpable need for transparency and accountability in these operations to ensure they indeed serve the purpose of fostering peace and not further entrenching control or securing economic interest unduly. The role of the French military in various coups across the continent has also been a point of concern and speculation. While France officially denies involvement, the frequent occurrence of coups in nations where French troops are present raises eyebrows and necessitates a thorough and impartial review. Transparency in these matters is non-negotiable, as the lives and futures of millions are at stake, as well as the integrity of international diplomatic relations. Now let's explain how France has failed African French-speaking countries. One major point of contention is the economic policies and practices France employs in Africa. The use of the CFA front, for instance, has been criticized for fostering economic dependency among the 14 African countries that use it. Although providing stability, the currency arrangement restricts these nations' monetary policy freedom, effectively tethering their economies to France. The CFA front has been regarded by critics as a relic of colonial times, maintaining a form of neo-colonial economic control that limits these countries' developmental potential and sovereignty. Moreover, French companies have a significant presence in many African nations, often dominating sectors critical to these countries' economies, such as utilities, telecommunications, and infrastructure. Concerns have been raised regarding the terms and conditions under which these corporations operate, with accusations of exploitative practices, inadequate reinvestment into local economies, and insufficient consideration for environmental and social impacts. France's military engagement in Africa has been a double-edged sword. While ostensibly deployed for peacekeeping and counterterrorism operations, French military presence 
has at times been implicated in controversies, including support for authoritarian regimes, involvement in political crises, and inadequate responses to humanitarian issues. The military interventions often appear more in line with protecting French interests than genuinely supporting long-term peace and stability in the region. Political interference is another crucial aspect. France has been accused of playing an influential role in the political landscape of its former colonies, sometimes to the extent of determining the outcome of elections or supporting particular political factions and leaders. This level of involvement often undermines the democratic processes in these nations, fostering a climate of dependency and subservience that hinders the development of robust, independent political institutions. Despite significant investment and aid flows from France to Africa, the continent continues to grapple with deep-seated challenges related to poverty, healthcare, education, and infrastructure. Critics argue that French aid and investment often lack a focus on sustainable development, geared more towards creating favorable conditions for French businesses than addressing the fundamental challenges facing African societies. While France promotes French language and culture actively across Africa, the educational and cultural initiatives often seem designed to foster a form of cultural dependency. Critics argue that these initiatives sometimes sideline indigenous languages and cultures, perpetuating a form of cultural imperialism that impacts the identity and self-perception of the African populace. Mali, Niger, and Gabon showcases different facets of the critique against France's policies and actions in Africa. The overarching themes include economic exploitation, political manipulation, military intervention without long-term stability, and a lack of focus on sustainable development and democratic governance. However, it's also essential to approach these critiques with a nuanced understanding. The relationship between France and its former African colonies is deeply entrenched and multifaceted, with a myriad of actors and interests involved on both sides. Constructive change will require concerted efforts from both African nations and France to redefine their relationships based on mutual respect, equity, and shared benefits. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome your thoughts and questions on this complex and vital subject. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing and growing its influence. Your subscriptions and likes motivate us to generate more content, so please keep supporting us. Check out this video showing on your screen right now, and I will see you on the other side.